Although it may not seem like it, this is the largest construction project in Danish history. The Danes are pouring a whopping 34 billion US dollars into a new kind of energy hub, rather than a new city district, airports, or high-speed rail line. The first energy island ever created. Will the massive artificial island be worth it? Will it assist Denmark in reaching its goal? The development of two new energy islands, one in the North Sea and one in the Baltic Sea, was among the key components of the Danish government's Climate Action Plan of 2020. The energy islands will either export clean energy directly to Denmark's mainland and its neighbors, or transform it into green fuels that can be used to power vehicles like lorries, shops, and other forms of heavy transportation. The islands will be situated in the North Sea, 100 kilometers off the coast of Denmark. The island will eventually connect 10 gigawatts of offshore wind, and by 2030, it'll be capable of supporting 3 gigawatts. This can replace 25 conventional offshore wind farms. The idea of energy islands encompasses the definition of an existing island, the building of an artificial island, or the creation of an island based on a platform that will serve as a hub for the distribution of power between Denmark and its neighbors from nearby offshore wind farms. Additionally, the energy islands will enable the connection of various offshore technical devices for electricity generation, such as energy storage facilities, hydrogen or electrolysis plants, or other energy conversion technologies. One island, many connections. Energy islands can combine the electricity produced by numerous offshore wind farms and supply it directly to numerous nations. This is a departure from the previous approach of constructing solitary offshore wind farms with a single country's power supply. A far-off artificial energy island might be built as a sand island, a steel platform, or a sizable concrete container that is lowered into place and filled with stone material, depending on the local conditions. However, the power hub for the energy island in the Baltic Sea will be located on the already existing island of Bornholm. A climate-neutral Europe will be possible thanks to the hub's improved grid integration and decreased production of renewable electricity. The artificial island, which will be initially the size of 18 football fields, will be connected to hundreds of offshore wind turbines, and will provide both electricity for homes, as well as green hydrogen for use in transportation, industry, and heavy lifting. The action was taken at the same time that the European Union unveiled plans to change its electricity system to rely primarily on renewable energy sources within a decade, and to 25-fold its offshore wind energy capacity by 2050. When fully operational, the hub's initial capacity of 3 gigawatts of offshore wind energy can be scaled up to 10 gigawatts, which could power 10 million households. The energy island, the first of its kind, ushers in a new era of environmentally friendly energy production and represents an important development for both Denmark and for the rest of the world. It's been long debated whether the island should be built as an embankment or a steel platform, a cost-benefit analysis of wind by consulting firm Kaui was just published, and it pegs the price of a 3 gigawatt energy island in the North Sea at 7.93 billion euros. This holds regardless of whether the island is built as a steel platform or a Kaisun embankment. Offshore wind farms and power transmissions are included in the price. The analysis reveals that there is a price difference when it comes to connecting the intended 10 gigawatts of offshore wind. The least expensive option in this case would be an embankment, which would cost 28.22 billion euros, while a platform would cost close to 29.57 billion euros. To qualify the knowledge base for the realization of the energy island, Kaui and EnergyNet have been working for the Danish energy agency since 2018. The establishment of two energy hubs and related offshore wind farms has been decided upon by a large coalition of Danish parties. On June 22nd of 2020, the Danish parliament voted overwhelmingly to begin the construction of two energy islands. An artificial island in the North Sea will act as a central location for three gigawatt offshore wind farms, with the potential for up to 10 gigawatts in the future. The Baltic Sea's Bornholm Island will serve as the geographic center for two gigawatts worth of offshore wind farms. The second energy island in the Baltic Sea, the Bornholm Energy Island, will use the existing island of Bornholm as a location for the power hub, while Vin's construction is still up for debate. 
German grid operator 50 Hertz and Danish grid operator EnergyNet reached an agreement. They wanted to determine whether it's feasible and advantageous to use the Danish island of Bornholm as a future energy island to connect the two nations with an electric cable. The partnership between 50 Hertz and EnergyNet represents the first significant step towards linking the two Danish energy islands with other nations. According to EnergyNet, interconnectors between neighboring nations are essential to the viability of the energy islands for both financial and in terms of green transition reasons. The energy island project is welcome news for the renewable industry which has experienced supply chain problems as a result of the pandemic. The International Energy Agency predicts that the world will add 167 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity this year, 13% less than in 2019. That is going to be the first time in 20 years the growth rate has decreased. Global renewable power capacity is expected to increase by 6%, despite a decline in new additions. As projects have either been partially completed or are in an advanced stage of development, offshore wind has fared the least poorly when compared to other renewable energy sectors. This year, it's anticipated that there won't be that many wind project delays. Since 2020, Jurgen Jul, a project director in Cowie's Marine and Foundation Engineering, has been involved in the Danish Power Island plans and is not afraid to express alternative ideas. The construction of a sizable artificial island 100 kilometers off the coast ain't simple, but it's undoubtedly doable, and it could make Denmark completely independent of all fossil fuels. According to the Vind Consortium, ambitious solutions are needed to meet ambitious climate targets. Kaui and Arkitima had the chance to create alternative concepts to envision what the first energy island in the world might resemble while working with Copenhagen infrastructure partners in the consortium. On a man-made island in waters between 25 and 30 meters deep, the world's first offshore energy hub must take into account much more than just aesthetics. To create something that has never been done before, a vision of this magnitude requires courage and dedication. But most importantly, the idea for the energy island came from a sincere motivation, enabling a small town like Denmark to make the switch to a greener economy. Such infrastructure would not only enable Denmark to export renewable energy, but also make the nation self-sufficient from it. Limited weather windows for marine construction activities are another consequence of the rapidly changing weather, and are a hundred kilometers of distance from the Danish west coast. And from the perspective of construction, that is. All construction work must be carefully planned because there is rarely still weather outside, and there must be room to modify the plans as needed. As much work as possible should be done on the shore with elements then transported to the site and installed to lessen reliance on the weather. It'll be necessary to set up floating housing close to the construction site because the trip from the site to the shore is, is too far for daily commutes. The energy hub will act as an offshore power plant, collecting and delivering clean energy directly to consumers and nations bordering the North Sea from the hundreds of wind turbines surrounding the island. The long-term goal is to be able to store green electricity on the islands, transforming it into liquid green fuel and shipping it to Denmark and nearby nations via subsea cables. Value for the green transition, electrification. Green power from the two energy islands can meet increasing electricity consumption in a climate-friendly Denmark, with more heat pumps, electric vehicles, and the like than today. European transition. The two energy islands' green power can be exported to nearby nations, aiding in the continent's transformation, hydrogen and green fuels. Extra green energy from the two energy islands can be transformed into hydrogen and climate-neutral fuels that can be used in heavy industry, ships, airplanes. The artificial island will present the best chances for project expansion, such as constructing a harbor and facilities for storing and converting green electricity from the nearby sea wind turbines. In addition, the abundance of offshore wind energy can be used to create an environmentally friendly fuel for heavy industry, aviation, shipping, heavy vehicles. The initial capacity of the two hubs will be 5 gigawatts, which is triple the installed offshore capacity in Denmark today. The agreements would also outline plans for just a transition for affected workers and set a final phase-out date for fossil fuel extraction in 2050. Denmark currently produces more oil than any other country in the EU, so and it is the biggest producer globally to have done so. By no later than 2030, it's intended to build the two energy islands and connect 5 to 6 gigawatts. However, the Danish pension fund, Pension Denmark, and the renewable energy company both declared that it'd be possible to build energy islands a lot sooner. Thanks for listening.